We are offering our thoughts and ideas on who the female and minority candidates should be, having worked in executive search for so many years and now working as an executive coach. Donald helped me get women into Augusta National. I am the 11th great-great-granddaughter of the Reverend William Brewster, who was a Mayflower pilgrim. He hopes to find someone who is a, quote, political person, who has established networks in Washington, and can help him navigate the D.C. political world. We need to factor in how can we attract the women and minority and Hispanic votes. By the way, Condi Rice um, is a member of Augusta now, so Donald Trump should be able to reach out to her pretty easily and get her input on either would she consider being a vice presidential candidate or does she have any input on who would make a vice presidential candidate. I think that call should be made to Condoleezza Rice. Donald, you should make that call, actually. And names are being thrown out there by the press as finalists on the list. You need to have multiple women and minority minorities, especially given that Donald Trump may be running against a female candidate for president. First off, we've got to take a close look at Marco Rubio, someone from a younger generation. He's an Hispanic candidate, hoping that he will seriously consider it as well. Bobby Jindal um, is very intelligent. He had worked at McKinsey prior to becoming governor of Louisiana. You know, he's worked on some very challenging things in New Orleans and other places. A very high percentage of people who get uh, doctorate degrees um, and are doctors in the United States are actually Indian. Um, so it's actually um, a very influential group. Um, I think it's really important we take a look at the senior most woman in the Senate, and that is Susan Collins of Maine. Um, very interesting woman, St. Lawrence University uh, undergraduate, majored in government, very accomplished, many years of experience in the Senate, that women are better at building bipartisan coalitions. So I wanted to make sure that Donald Trump is very aware of that. Studies have found that women in Congress not only uh, sponsor more bills, but also collect more co-sponsors for their bills. How Corey Landowski had appeared on CBS this morning, and he had talked about how Trump will pick someone who has federal elective experience so they understand how to make sure that they can get the legislative agenda done in the Senate. So we need to take a closer look at Susan Collins. Okay. Now, Michelle Bachman from Minnesota would add a lot of regional diversity. She ran for president herself. I want to put her on the list. Okay. Uh, Joni Ernst and Mary Fallon have also been mentioned. You know, we have a candidate from, from Iowa. I assume that Donald has spent some time with her. Certainly Olympia Snow. Uh, Shelley Capito on the list. Um, she's a representative from West Virginia. West Virginia has had a lot of challenges as it relates to jobs and the economy, so we want to take a closer look at her. Kathy Rogers from Washington I have on the list. Uh, Marsha Blackburn I have on the list. Carly Fiorini would be a great candidate for vice president. I still would like to see her on the list as well, Donald. I know that um, some people have a strong affinity for Newt Gingrich as a potential VP. I certainly hope he will you know, be called upon as an advisor or put into a role in government under the Trump administration, um, assuming that Donald wins. I like him. I think that you know he should be vetted as well. Um, there are some people that believe that he should take a look at uh, John Kasich because he comes from Ohio, which is a key state. Um, I think the Lehman Brothers is a little tricky on his resume, but um, I like John Kasich and the debates. I have not met him. I have met Donald Trump. Well, I would reach out to Herman Cain and ask his input as well. Who would be the best candidate in their view? So it's an important way to go about this. Um, you also want to go to some of the most prominent leaders in Washington and ask them, who do they think would be the best candidates for vice president? And you want to filter some of that because it may be sort of the old boy network may get involved there. I worked in executive search for 18 years in New York. I now live in Florida. And we can then really uh, discuss everyone and make sure we're choosing the right candidate. And sometimes women, I think, are overlooked because they don't have that extroverted sort of male style. Um, and I want to make sure that we consider all of these female candidates in government. It's very important, especially with good Washington connections. Uh, I'd be happy to help you do it. I originally had thought that Donald Trump might go with a Ted Cruz or a Marco Rubio, especially to attract the Hispanic vote. Millennials, the 18 to 34, they're very concerned about college debt right now. You need to explain things to them. 
you need to explain things to middle-aged women who are having trouble finding investors for their companies and finding good jobs for their family. If you don't get those votes, you're not going to win. And we've seen in certain situations where the women in the Senate have actually come together to influence the men in terms of getting things passed. They've been very collaborative in passing uh, bipartisan decisions. In fact, the women of the Senate actually meet um, for dinner about once a month. This is a very important decision that Donald Trump will make. It could determine whether he wins or loses the general election. So all eyes are on who Donald J. Trump will choose as his vice presidential nominee. So please feel free to reach out to me at sandrarep.com and parthenonadvisors.com. I also have an MBA from Northwestern at the Kellogg School.